everyone. Welcome back to Serving Up Plumbing with me, David Butler, your master plumber. Today, we're talking to those plumber's apprentices again that are looking to go take their tradesman and journeyman tests. But today, instead of talking about the written tests like we've talked about previously, we're talking about the practical test and that infamous dollhouse down in Austin. But before we do that, please hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. I hope it helps you. And let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Now, let's learn what's on the plumbing test. The plumbing test in Austin and Waker are broken down into two categories. The practical test, which is your shop work, which means you're doing things like PVC and copper and all of that, and the dollhouse, which is where you actually have to plumb a small scale house. That's the two things you're gonna have to do in Austin or Waco. Let's break down the practical first. We've got seven different items that are in the practical test. You have to do every one of these to pass the practical. Now understand, as I said, there was two parts to it. There's a passing grade for the practical and there's a passing grade for the house. You can pass one and fail the other. You won't have to retake the whole thing. You just have to take what you fail. But let's learn it well so we go down and pass it the first time. PVC, you're gonna be doing three quarter inch PVC. You're going to measure, cut, glue, and assemble the PVC. Now, they've got a setup in some walls and things that you glue together. You get about three foot of pipe and you have to measure and cut and put it exactly where they tell you to put it. So that's the PVC. Copper, you have to measure, cut, solder. And one thing about it, on copper and black iron pipe, it's critical that you ream the pipe. Same thing here, ream pipe. Pipe should always be reamed because that stops flow restriction. It also stops turbulence and several other issues that can happen. Make sure you ream those two pipes. It is something that will get you very close to failing if you didn't. If you didn't ream either one of them, you would probably fail your test. So you should always ream your pipes to make sure that there's proper flow. You're gonna cut it, solder it, and they're gonna judge that. They literally have a machine that cuts the solder joint open and looks at it after you've soldered it. So you gotta make sure you know how to solder. Black pipe, you're going to cut and thread. After you cut it, what are you gonna do? You're gonna ream it, right? After you cut your copper, what are you gonna do? You're gonna ream it. You always ream the pipe right after you cut it, before you solder it, before you clean it, before you thread it. All right, cast iron. All you have to do on the cast iron is you have to measure it, cut it, and assemble with a no-hub, okay? A no-hub coupling, you have to put two fittings together on a piece of pipe that you cut. So, that's our cast iron. So we've gone through four already, all right? That's cool, we've got this, 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 and this. We know four things already we're gonna do in the practical. Not so hard, right? Most of you do these things every day. Now, cast iron is an odd one for some plumbers. If you're a commercial plumber, you may do this a lot. If you're not, you may never have cut cast iron, and you have to cut it with snap cutters. The big rigid snap cutters or reeds, see the picture up here? We've got snap cutters that we have to cut it with. You only have to do it once, but you do have to measure it also and make sure you cut it on the mark and straight. Water heater code. What they actually do down there is they have water heaters set up on the wall, and they have code violations on them. And they're gonna ask you questions. You actually go over, you kinda stand in front of a podium, and you look at the water heaters and it'll have 10 or 15 questions right there and it's going to ask you what's wrong with this on water heater number one what's wrong with this on water heater number two now understand some guys come back to me and say man they didn't even ask about this or that there's a lot of things wrong with these water heaters pay attention to what they're asking you don't get sidetracked by other things that's wrong with it you only need to focus on what they're asking you to look at and make sure you answer the question properly. So water heater code is just that. There may be something wrong with the TMP, there may be no draft diverter, there may be no shutoff valve, the gas may not be right, all kinds of things like that. There's very little about tankless on this test. There could be some now, they haven't had it in the past, but they can always upgrade these tests. But either way, if you know chapter 28 in the water heater code that you've already done on your written test, you should know everything that's wrong with these water heaters. And understand too, they have gas and electric water heaters, but the code is the same for both most of the time as far as what the safety devices are and that sort of thing. 45 degree offset. You need to go watch the link to this video, the 45 degree offset. We've already shot that one or it'll be coming out soon. So make sure and watch that. 
the 45 degree offset you may never use as a service plumber but as a commercial plumber you should use it quite a bit as a pipe fitter you're going to use it a lot residential service plumbers not so much but you need to know this anyways it's on your plumbing test and finally the rolling offset there'll also be a video that you can go to on the rolling offset that you can see the rolling offsets a little more tricky and it's more rare it's seldom that we use this unless we're doing pipe fitting or industrial work seldom ever will you use it as a standard residential plumber or a smaller commercial plumber but the rolling offset is something we need to know and if you ever go do commercial work you probably will use it so the rolling offset is the seventh and final thing in your practical work in your shop I've seen guys finish this in an hour and a half I've seen it take them three or four hours to finish either way don't rush yourself just pay attention make sure you follow all the codes make sure you install it the way you know it's supposed to make sure you use your primer make sure you use your glue properly make sure you ream your copper and make sure you measure correctly if you mismeasure that counts points against you you don't fail the test for missing one thing it's a point system and they add points up so it takes a lot to fail it but if you do it the way you should and you know the plumbing and you don't get too nervous that's what you're going to have to do on your plumbing test now understand we're talking about your initial tradesman or your initial journeyman if you've already taken your tradesman test all you have to do is take the journeyman written if you never got your tradesman you're going to have to take all of this shop work and do your journeyman written but if you already had your tradesman you did all of the shop work already and all you need to do to get your journeyman is do a written test a lot of guys that are in commercial work never get their tradesman because it doesn't do you any good to have a tradesman as a commercial plumber if you don't have a tradesman you're going to get your journeyman you're going to have to do all this shop work in austin after you pass your written test and you're going to have to do your dollhouse also that's it that's your practical test seven simple things you go down there and you do what you do as a plumber pvc copper black pipe cast iron water heater code 45 degree offset and rolling offset and you move on and you can do your dollhouse now i will tell you this there's no rhyme or reason to what order you're going to do it in you may do your dollhouse first or you may do your shop work first just depends on how busy they are and how many people they have taking the test they only have so many houses and they only have so many slots in the shop work so i've seen them do right on the house the guys go right in and do their house and i've seen the guys go right in and do their shop work so you really don't know don't sweat it one way or the other let's talk about the dollhouse it's the infamous dollhouse everybody seems to be terrified of the dollhouse i will say this i always like giving the guys a good look at it and roger wakefield has a video on taking the plumbing exam he actually got to take some pictures of the exam room in waco before it was ever finished and he's got a really good photo of the actual dollhouses in the plumbing room so i recommend roger wakefield's i've known roger a long time he has some really good videos also go take a look at the one that says taking the plumbing exam where he's showing the new waco facility when it first opened and you can get a really good look at what the dollhouse looks like if you only subscribe to two plumbers on youtube subscribe to me and roger so what's on the dollhouse now the dollhouse is about a four foot wide four to five foot wide by about four foot tall three to four feet tall miniature house it's bare studs it's just like if you went out and saw a house being framed up and it was all framed up and you were ready to do a complete rough in on that house for the top out that's what you've got to do now this is a pier and beam house so you're going to do the rough in under the floor and you're going to do the rough in in the walls and go out the roof now the one thing they don't require you to do is run your vents they make you take everything up to your drain arms and then stop but you do have to tell them what you're going to do with your vents and how you're going to tie them together and you're limited to only three vents going out the roof so you have to first design your plumbing system what do you design it off of they give you a drawing of a two-story house you've got the first floor and the second floor most of the time the floors bathrooms are the same but not always as a tradesman you have to do six fixtures as a journeyman you might have to do eight or ten tradesmen you have to do generally a kitchen sink a toilet a lavatory and maybe a bathtub they seldom have showers or anything like that on it and they don't have washing machines on it so you're going to use some combination of that to do six fixtures 
it's going to be kind of weird because it's not going to be a normal house. You're going to leave off either a toilet or a lavatory or something. They have a kitchen sink on both floors. Most houses don't have kitchen sinks on both floors. But that's what they're doing to try and make sure you understand how to properly install a sanitary sewer system to either the IPC or UPC. That's what it's all about. They want to know that you know what you're doing when it comes to that. And part of that, as being a plumber, you need to know how to design it so that you can put it together. That way, if somebody tells you to do it wrong, you know how to fix it right. Then you need to take off the material. What does that mean? After you do your design, and they give you all the scratch paper and calculators and pencils and erasers that you need to draw out your system. You cannot draw on their drawing. <laughs> but you draw your own little sketch, and then you do a material takeoff. Just like you see your plumbers doing jobs every day. If you're going out to do a new house or a, a water heater install or anything else, you have to figure what materials it's going to take for you to do it. That's what you have to do here. You have to figure out after you design how you're going to do your system to rough the plumbing in, then you have to do a material takeoff and you have to order that material just like you're going to at the plumbing supply house. You've got to give that list to the examiner and he's going to go back, pull your materials, and when he gets that done, he's going to call you and say, hey, I've got your materials. Come back and do your installation. So, number one is your design. Number two is your material takeoff. And number three is your installation. Now again, design, you can design it however you want. It has to be done to a sanitary plumbing system. Now I believe fully, and I teach this all the time, keep it as simple as you can. The fewer fittings, the fewer foot of pipe, the better your design, the better system you install. That means it can have less problems, right? But just because you have extra fittings or here and that there, that doesn't mean it's not a good design system. It doesn't mean it's not meeting code. It may not be the optimal system, but you can design most plumbing systems 10 different ways. You don't have to do it just one way, but just keep in mind, keep it as simple as possible. After you design it, look at it and see, can I simplify this any? Makes it easier for your material takeoffs and everything. After you get the design done, let's do those material takeoffs. You need to figure out every 45 you need, every coupling, every combination, every santee, short sweeps and long sweeps, Make sure you use long sweeps where you're supposed to use long sweeps and combos where you're supposed to use combos. Install cleanouts where you need cleanouts. Make everything just as if you were doing a real house, just on a smaller scale. After you do all of that, you pick up all your materials, you order them. This is the key here. You get your initial material order, all right? And then they allow you three more trips to the supply house. So. Do as good a job as you can to get all your material on the first takeoff. If you don't, don't sweat it. If you go back there and then you realize, well, maybe something's not built exactly like I expected or something's not right, or maybe you change your mind, that's okay. But don't immediately go, hey, Mr. Examiner, I need some parts. I need more parts. Oh, give me one short sweep. No. Look at it. Lay out all your fittings. See what you've got and then figure out what you're going to need. Because remember, you've only got three trips. If you take more than three trips to Spy House, they're going to deduct points. You don't want any points deducted that you don't have to lose. So take your time, lay out all your fittings, see what you're going to need, see what you're going to be missing. Then make a cumulative list of everything you're going to need. You may not need but one more trip to Spy House. You may got it all on your first trip. And you're saying, well, what if I ordered too many fittings, right? Everybody on every plumbing job we've ever done, we have fittings left over. If you order a few extra, that's okay. A few extra is the key word there. If you have four or five fittings left over at the end of this, you're probably fine. If you've got 20 fittings left over at the end of this laying there, you're going to get points taken off. So you don't want to over order. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know where you're going with your plumbing and how you're going to put it in. Okay? And then after all of that, you install it. Now this is the most frustrating part, but really to me it's the easiest part. Once you've figured out all the design and the material order, that's the hard part. Installing it is what you do every day, right? So you have to put it in. The hardest thing about this is they're small little three-quarter inch PEX fittings. And they fall apart. You're not gluing anything. The three-quarter inch stands for four inch or three inch. And the half inch PEX represents two inch pipe. So you put these together and work with it. The problem here is 
they don't hold together real well. You're not crimping anything, you're not gluing anything. So it's frustrating as you're tying something together over here, this part's falling apart. They do give you little twisty ties like bread ties that you can tie it off to the studs. The house already has cutouts on it, so there's only so many places you can run. You don't have to have some little miniature sawzall cutting out wood and everything. It's got the studs notched and everything for you already. The floor joists slide in and out so that you can move the floor joists out of your way to bring your plumbing up in the walls. Make sure you hit the walls. Make sure you measure so that your toilets are the right distances off the walls, the right rough end dimensions, and you won't have any problem. They will count off for improper measurements. You do need to learn how to read scale. The drawings are on a quarter inch scale. The house is a scale of its own. So you have a ruler for the house and you have a quarter inch scale for the drawing. You have to transpose that. So you do need to practice reading your scale. You do have to use a scale rule and you have to convert it to the house size. Their ruler works for you just fine though. It tells you what three feet on three quarters is of a scale and you just go to three feet on the ruler for the house. Simple. But if you're supposed to have a toilet that's 12 inch rough, make sure you get that closet arm 12 inches off the wall. If you're supposed to have a drain arm at 14 inches off the floor, make sure it's not 18 inches. Those are the kind of things that will make you fail your test. And that's it, guys. I hope that takes a little bit of the scare out of it. Why do we do all this? Because on a real plumbing job, they don't want you to just know how to put the plumbing in. They want you to know how to order the materials, how to be efficient, how to make sure you don't have to make more trips to supply house than you should have to. You lose money when you do that. You can't stay in business if you're losing money and you're not taking good care of your customer either. So being a good, efficient plumber, knowing what you're doing, no trips to the supply house more than you have to, all of that stuff adds up to being a great plumber. That's it guys. Seven steps on the practical, three steps on the dollhouse, and you've passed your journeyman or tradesman test. Remember, on your journeyman house, you're going to have to do a few more fixtures. You're probably going to have to do eight to ten fixtures, whereas on your tradesman, you only do six. You're probably going to have to do a back outlet toilet also, and you probably are going to do a urinal on a house if you're doing journeyman. But it's just plumbing, right? You just have to know how to rough it in. And they do give you the rough end dimensions. I hope this helps you. I hope it takes some of the anxiety out of it. I greatly appreciate y'all watching this. It's always my desire to help guys become better plumbers and to become a plumber. Let me know when you go take that tradesman or your journeyman test, if you pass or how it was. Give me your thoughts on it. If there's something new that I didn't mention, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And always remember, don't forget to tell your friends, the butler did it. So what? So.